that's that's the plan you know is to try to um you know kind of go go into because i mean the first jump course this you know this turns right this turns left <laughs> you know and that's fine but there's so much more uh you know and as a canopy designer you know i've i've done a lot of experiments you know and and a lot of those things are um fundamentals that are not taught you know yeah and and the more you understand the more you can be under canopy and have a better sense of what your options are, you know, to solve different problems. Cause let's face it, you don't always get a good spot. <laughs> you know, sometimes you open up and go, you know, where the heck is the airport? And then you see it on the horizon. And now you're faced with, you know, either uh, we call it milk in it, you know, where you're, you're extending the glide of the canopy in a variety mm -hmm. of, of ways, or you're choosing a new spot, you know, and you've got yeah. to be able to work that parachute in in ways that's going to get you out of trouble and safely on the ground. Uh, and so that's, you know, kind of the most important thing for me is obviously safety. But the the way that we get to safety isn't just information. It's about inspiration. It's about getting people fired up, fired up about flying their parachute, you know, uh, about being playful and exploring different things. And and of course, you can't play hard unless you know what the limits are you yeah. know and to me that's that's what's vital for this stuff i just want to welcome the other folks that showed up hello hello <laughs> yeah we're we're just sort of just getting started you know i i do these live sessions three times a week um tuesday wednesday thursday different times for different time zones you know so like the folks in europe they can't make it to the evening session for you know me on the east coast of the u.s so um, but we talk about all kinds of stuff, whatever you guys want. Um, and, you know, obviously there's, there's tons of different, um, different things that we can kind of go into. Uh, but my, you know, my primary objective is, is to help people to feel more comfortable under parachute so that they can, you know, feel not just less afraid, but joyful, <laughs> you know, so you can be playful with the parachute. Hello, hello. Hi, Nicole. Um, and, and really kind of expand um, what you do up there instead of hanging there like a piece of meat. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're more than a suspended load. You're a pilot. Um, but as a pilot, I mean, the way, you know, when I observe first jump courses, um, there's so much more that needs to be taught. Right. I mean, they want to give you the basic stuff of, well, this is what a flare is. And this is what happens if you flare and you let up on your toggles. That stuff obviously has to be covered at the beginning, but there's so much more. There's so many things that are going to allow you to um, to explore, for instance. OK, so here's a great example as a topic and we can go into anything you guys want. I'm wide open. Recovery arc. You guys, have you heard the term recovery arc? So like when you, let's say you want to do a 180 degree turn, the amount of altitude that parachute loses is not a fixed thing because you got options. There's different ways to make the canopy turn, right? I mean, so if you do, let's say from full flight into a pretty aggressive deep turn, and then you let it all the way off, you might lose a couple hundred feet, right? It could be over 200 feet of altitude loss. And that's a problem if you're at 190 feet, you know? So to expand our skill set includes things like, of course, you know, brake turn, right? You add brakes. Were you guys all taught this? I hope so. <laughs> you know, where you slow the canopy down into like about half brakes or so, and then you turn the canopy by offsetting your toggles. And since you've added drag to the parachute, you've changed the shape so that it actually has more drag and more lift. Now you lose less altitude. Okay, that's a that's a good start, and it can save your butt. What if, though, you're in the middle of a turn and the ground comes up? It's one of the most important ideas. And I don't notice that being taught enough. If you're in a turn and now you're realizing at the last moment, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm going to hit the ground. First instinct for most of us is, well, what do you do right before you flare? You put your hands all the way up. And their instinct is, you know, I want to stop turning so that I can flare. But what happens when you let that toggle up? That's an important feature. So if I'm in, let's say, if I'm in half breaks and I look up on the toggles, what's going to happen? Right, exactly. 
you're going to surge because you've reduced the drag value of the canopy. Drag is just a force vector that's in opposition to your direction of motion. So I let my tail up and the bottom drops out, right? I have a pitch change in that pitch change, right? So this is pitch axis. If I have a negative pitch change, now the relationship of my wing to the airflow, right, which is caused by my motion, is a reduced angle, right? I have a lower angle of attack, so the canopy is producing less lift. And so I descend a lot faster because I did that. The reason why I'm bringing that concept up is, well, I'm in a toggle turn close to the ground and I let my hand up, the bottom drops out because you know, a single toggle input is half of a flare, <laughs> you know? It's not the same as an airplane, that the means by which we turn the canopy is basically the same means by which we get more lift for landing. So given all that, one of the things that I want people to, to practice on the ground, you know, sitting in a chair so you get the muscle memory, I got bungee cords and stuff in my house, all kinds of different toys to train, but you can do it obviously in the sky as well. You turn the canopy and then you force both brakes during the turn. Hit those, hit that flare while you're still turning. And then you're going to increase the angle of attack of the parachute. You're going to feel heavier, right? Which is an indication you got more lift all of a sudden, right? The inertia was trying to make you go down and now your parachute's trying to pull in the other direction. So you'll, you'll reduce the descent rate. And I think it's an important thing to practice because if I just go boom, right? See the difference? If I go boom compared to boom, both toggles or one toggle. If I hit the one, I'm going to oscillate on the roll axis. I'm going to lose control of the parachute. I'm not going to get a very good landing if this is the last thing I do, right? I'm, I'm at 50 feet. I'm still in a turn. Maybe I need to avoid something. Maybe I wasn't quite at the wind line or I made my last turn from base leg to final lower than I should have because I just didn't fly a very good pattern this time. If I'm in the turn and I hit the other brake, I'm going to create other problems. It's better than nothing, <laughs> but it's a lot better to hit both brakes the same amount, the same amount. And now I'm going to change this flight path from a descending mode to one that suddenly levels off during the turn and you can't be wimpy you got to be kind of uh, you know you got to really push those toggles hard and lean forward so you have physical power to do that right out in front of you steering like a student does you know with your hands in front of your body you're weaker right you're using smaller muscle groups so when i lean forward onto those toggles i actually have more power to change direction of flight with a nudge on both brakes the same amount then as the descent rate diminishes down towards zero, I can roll gently to zero after. So I fix the pitch problem first, like back pressure on the yoke of the airplane, right? That's what it is. And now I blend that maneuver into a flight mode that's landable, you know, where I can smoothly put the parachute over my head and then push into the, re the rest of the flare based on my altitude. Right. And that's that's skills of adaptation. That's, you know, noticing what's happening. How high am I actually? You don't hit the rest of the flare when you're still at 20 feet. <laughs> you know, you got to be patient about it. And the way that this unfolds is different every time, depending on how fast you're going and how big your parachute is and how long your brake lines are and how low you are. There's so much. And that's where, you know, there's a whole other side to this that leads to the ability to turn low safely right because they always say don't turn low well that's not going to work <laughs> you know it's like like telling a 16 year old kid don't have sex hey, yeah yeah that's not going to work you got to you know explain more and so the the pull out of a low turn is about the body position you know not letting your legs hang and scrunching your butt your knees up towards your your chest makes your body smaller so it helps you come out of the dive have you thought about that one Right, You have drag coming off your canopy, you have drag coming off your body. Two sources of drag, and they're, they're kind of independent. And when I'm in this diving mode, if I want to pull out of the dive, part of my job is to increase the lift and drag of the airfoil to move the pitch and increase the angle of attack, you know, the angle of the wing to the relative wind. And the other is to reduce body drag, right? To bring your knees up 
actually facilitates the recovery, reducing body drag, moves the pitch. It's it's so, you know, of course, that doesn't work very well if you're hanging in the gingerbread man. <laughs> you know, that way, like the student position with the leg straps all the way up in your hips, your legs hang low and it's very hard to lift your knees, especially when you're pulling G's, like when you're pulling out of a dive, right? You'll weigh more, which means your legs will maybe double in weight. It's hard to do. But if after opening, you push forward on the risers, and you lift your knees above your hips and kind of wiggle your butt like you're trying to burrow your butt into the sand at the beach. Now you can be sitting. Now your femurs are, are at this angle as opposed to your femurs at this angle, right? Because you've moved the hang point uh, forward towards your knee. And now you're in a seated posture, which it makes it much easier to, to pull out of a dive. It also makes it better glide ratio, right? When you reduce body drag, the canopy is more efficient because you matter. You know what I mean? It's not just the aerodynamics of the airfoil and the drag of the lines and the flapping of the slider. It's how much drag is my body exhibiting? And of course, that drag pulls back on the lines, which kind of dives the canopy a little bit. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is just sort of a, you know, a, a sample topic, but it's one that, yeah, I, I keep coming back to that very large topic because it's the one that matters the most boy am i tired of people getting hurt you know that's why i do this i'm tired of being out in there in the landing area and a person's got the ouchy foot you know and I, maybe i have to hold a parachute up to block the sun off of them while we wait for the helicopter i'm tired of it after 37 years of that so i teach you know so i teach in field questions and you know on whatever people need and it gets me away from my sewing machine which is good because i can only build parachutes for so many hours in a day <laughs> i get tired life is a risk there's a huge risk in life the biggest risk in life is that you'll waste it is that you'll be 80 years old and kicking yourself saying if only i'd done this oh i wish i'd done that the biggest risk in life is that you waste your opportunity of living it